acid catalyzed hydration with something like dilute sulfuric acid. The other way is this two-step process. What did we call this two-step process? Oxymercuration, demercuration. It's a sequence. But it's a sequence that we can actually carry out in one pot. Okay? So starting from the one octene, right, when we add the mercury acetate to the to the solution, what are we going to get? What happens in the first step? What do we add across the carbon-carbon double bond? Mercury? How do we add it? What's it going to look like? What's the structure? Tell me how to draw it. Spun up in. That's what we're going to get as an intermediate? What are we going to get as an intermediate? We will get what you're talking about at the very end of this, but what are we going to get? How's the mercury going to be bound initially? Okay. <clears throat> it's going to be a three-membered ring, right? With a mercurium ion, right? So we got mercury plus. That's an intermediate that forms. And now water attacks one of the two carbons, and which one does it attack? The most substituted or the least substituted? I'm not talking about the hydrogen, the oxygen. Uh, oxygen. It's going to go for the most substituted, right? And break that weak carbon mercury bond. And it turns out that it's that uh, bond between mercury and the most substituted carbon that's the weakest, and that's why we go after that, okay? And we end up now with what Obrey said. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We end up with this mercury species. We have our OH where we need it. And then in the last step, the sodium borohydride simply reduces off the mercury and we end up with mercury metal. Okay, that's going to fall out of solution. So we're going to do this particular reaction as a demonstration. And so what I have in this Erlenmeyer flask is 20 milliliters of water with some mercury acetate in it. You can kind of tell it's kind of orangish color. And to that, I'm going to add 20 milliliters of THF. What's the purpose of the THF? Help everything be soluble, that's right. So THF is water soluble and it will help make the solution be homogeneous when we add the one on team. So that kind of looks like our yellow a little bit. All right, so we've got this nice color change. For those of you up front, you're gonna be able to smell the THF. Okay, so We've got a solution of mercury, kind of a fine precipitate at this point. And what I have in here, in this pipette, is about two grams, more or less, of one octene. So what's going to happen to the color as I add the one octene to my mercury solution? It's going to go clear. Takes a little while for this to, to react. Do you see any differences? You start to lighten up, there's a lot less solid particulate around, right? Definitely tell it's lightening, lightening up, right? And there may be a slight excess of mercury, so we may not get it all. But I think you'll argue that the solution part is still. So what do we have at this stage? We're at this stage. What do we call it when we have a carbon metal bond? It's an organometallic species. That's exactly right. We'll give it a little more. Looks like that last little bit of mercury is stuck to the flask probably isn't going to react too well for us. But <coughs> clearly change colors, right? Colors. Okay, I've got a little dish of water here to keep things from getting too hot. I'll give it just another second or two here, see if we can get the last little bits of that. Yeah, it looks like it's not going to go. I think I add a little extra.
for three acid base groups. All right. So now what do I do? And the sodium borohydride. Now this sodium borohydride is in, uh, it's dissolved in water that's basic. So it's three molar sodium hydroxide. The whole purpose of the hydroxide is to allow the sodium borohydride to be stable. Okay. So I've got about 15 mils of that and we need all of that to go in. Now this part can get kind of exothermic so I've got a little water bath here to cool things should I need to. So we'll start off by adding just a little bit. See that? What are we forming? <coughs> We're forming mercury metal, that's right. And it, it's kind of hard for you to tell, but looking where I'm at, it starts off as extraordinarily tiny beads. And so it kind of initially looks like there's rain falling from the solution. How do you remember mercury looking? Ah, the little beads. Can you see the beads? It's going to look more and more like mercury here in just a minute. You can start to see the beads forming. Mm -hmm. Eventually, that's all going to clump together. And what does mercury look like? It's shiny metal. It's shiny metal, liquid, right? Yeah, it's a liquid metal at room temperature. So here in just a minute, we're going to have a pool of mercury in the bottom, but I'm going to have to figure out how to dispose of. See, the solution itself has pretty much so become clear. All of the fine mercury is kind of precipitated out. If you look really carefully, you can kind of see a second layer. Why am I? Why do I have two layers? Because you added two separate. You added like two separate times. I did add separate times, but why do I have two layers? What's the top layer? You think? Yeah, I think that top layer is. We don't have any acetone. Why would we have octanol on the top layer? Because it's not as dense. Not as dense. But aren't alcohol soluble in water? Not that one. Why not? It has five carbons. Okay, yeah, it does. It's outside the five carbon rule, right? And so that's right. So we've added so much stuff to this that actually the organic layer starts to separate out as a separate layer. So that top layer is actually a mixture of THF and our product. And so, thank you, Harry.